And the Bible says, Be gracious to me, God, according to your faithful love, according to your abundant compassion. Blot out my rebellion, completely wash away my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my rebellion, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. So you are right when you pass your sentence and are blameless when you judge. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. If you would pray with me, Father God in heaven, we are thankful. We are grateful, dear Lord, for another day that you have blessed us with. For another opportunity that we, your people, are gathered in your house, Father. Now seated at the table of your word, Father. Ready to hear, Father. Somebody's come as an empty pitcher before a flowing fountain. Ready to hear what it is that you have to say. And Father, we know we can't do anything until you come. So Father, I just ask that you would hide me behind Calvary's cross. Make my preaching so thin in human wisdom that it can only be seen by the shadow of the cross. May some relationship be formed between some soul and the Savior today. And Father, if you do this for us, we'll be so ever mindful to give your name to praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray that all those that love God say, Amen. 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 If you would, look over at your neighbor this morning. Find your good neighbor. Good one, good one. Like they came to have church this morning. Yeah. And just, just, just look at them and say, stop being guilty and be grateful. They ain't heard. And then you said, look at the other one real quick. They ain't that, cause, cause they didn't quite really grasp what you're saying and say, stop being guilty and be grateful. Has anybody here this morning ever did anything that left you feeling sad? Anybody in here ever did anything that not only had you feeling sad, but had you feeling down on your luck? On, had you walking around worried and depressed about your circumstances and situations? Yeah. Feeling like you are at the end of your rope. Somebody here at the end of their rope this morning. Right. Have you ever had to go on the message, as the message suggests today, and I, I want to touch on some things that will help us in this area to deal with with guilt and not just deal with guilt but deal with life because a lot of people whether you recognize it or not cannot move on in life because they feeling guilty I, I thought I had a real church this morning. A lot of people, a lot of people can't move forward in life. A lot of people cannot advance because they're still feeling guilty about what was and what happened. But I believe I got some people that know this morning that the Bible says that whom the Son sets free is truly free indeed. And if you've come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the Lord has saved you, you need not feel guilty about what happened. But but be grateful because the Lord has saved you from your sins. I want to deal with this to help us deal with life and not just deal with life, but deal with our mistakes and deal with our bad choices. Because there's not a person in this room who has not made a bad choice. Let me reword that. There is not a person in this room that has not made some bad choices. Yes. At some time or another in your life. See, see, you have to realize that when, that when you have guilt in a positive way, when you have guilt in a positive way, it comes as an indication that you are not living your best life. That you are not being your best self. You have not presented yourself in the light that you could have. That somewhere down on the inside of you, there is a better you screaming to get out. But he can't because of the you that you are right now. There's a better you saying that those decisions are not a reflection of who you truly are. I may have done what they said I did, but I am not what they say I am. Somebody didn't get that. I need to say that again. I may have done what they said I did, but I am not who they say I am. Somebody ought to give the Lord a praise this morning. 
because you recognize and you are grateful at the fact that God does not hold yesterday against you. God is not holding your past mistakes and your past sins against you. But if you come to him with a true and repentant heart, God will forgive you of every wrong that you've ever done. God will clean your slate. God will make you brand new. That don't mean we're going to forget. But the Lord will forgive you he will forgive you of your sins. Let me, let me try it. I, I may have done what they said I did, but I'm not who they say I am. Have you ever done something that didn't reflect who you are? I know it's just me and those three other people in the room. I know, I know, I know. Thank God for you. And the rest of you who came to church this morning, may God bless you and may heaven smile upon you till we meet again. I may have done it, but I am not it. And the part of me that is not it rebels against the part that did it. Yes. And I am ashamed. Uh -huh. And I am guilty yes. as charged yes. because I have not portrayed the best part yes. of who I am. Yes. And now I got to live with this feeling of being guilty of what I did and what you say about me as a result of what I did. Everybody ain't talking about you just to talk about you. Some people are talking about you based off of what you need. <laughs> Some people are talking about you based off of the choices that you made. Because some of the punishment is the pain of people whispering about the choices that you made. Anybody ever had to feel shame because you made a decision in public that brought shame on you? And now it's not that you know about it and God know about it, but now it's, been, it's invited other people into what you got going on. Let me tell you, that's why, that's why you need to keep some stuff to yourself. And there, there are certain areas, and even in relationships that you have with people, some people you can bring part of the way in. Everybody you can bring all the way in. There, there are some people, there are some people that you have to keep them at a distance because I would have you to know some of the people that we feel like are for us are actually against us. Everybody got a Judas in the camp somewhere. Every, everybody got somebody. Everybody got somebody dipping their hand in the dish picture. Child, let's go out to eat. Child, let's go do this. Child, let's go do that. And at the end of the day, you think they are actually out for your betterment when they are actually just waiting for the very precise moment for you to fall, for you to falter so they can say, well, child, I thought you was all Christian and all, and all this and that. And I thought that you were say when they just so soon forget where God found them. When they just so soon forget where God delivered them from. And I think that we all, as the people of God, got to get to a place to where you stop looking down your nose at other people's situations Stop saying what you won't ever do because when desire and temptation meet, we are all bound to sin. We are all bound to fall. Just thank God that it's not you today. It's hard, Deacon Starks, to defend yourself when what they said is true. It's hard. I, I, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to defend yourself when the murmuring of the voice of accusation is stronger on the inside than the voice of the critics on the outside. Guilt, guilt is not just about what other people are saying about you. It is what you are saying about yourself. It is the, 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 the condemnation that comes upon you. It is the struggle that lives inside of you that it ever left you saying, what was you thinking? Why did you do that? I know this ain't never been y'all, but I found myself one, two, three, four, five, six times before, you know, or whatever, asking myself, well, what are you thinking? What are you doing? Why are you here? What business do you have with this? Have you ever looked back at somebody and you just wondering, Lord, what in the world was I thinking? Have you, have you ever looked back at a situation like, Lord, did somebody slip some of my drink? Was I, was I crazy? Was I cuckoo? What, 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 why was I ever there? See, one of the things that we do when we're guilty and when we have feelings of guilt 
because it is such a heavy burden to carry. It's, it's a heavy burden because it can only exist in places that you care about. I'm going to be real with y'all this morning. It can only exist in places that you care about. It can only exist in places that you care. So it becomes a heavy burden to carry. So what we do is, I know this ain't you, we change the narrative of what happened to make the memory more palatable to us. We change the narrative of what happened to make the memory more palatable. We block out the parts that we are ashamed of and we remember how people responded to us without remembering how we entice the other person to act that way towards us in the beginning. Selective amnesia, amen, yeah, amen, amen. And ask your neighbor, do you have selective amnesia? Do you have selective amnesia? And so, and so, and so this story, this story that we tell ourselves about what happened causes a certain toxicity to the soul that stops us from getting what God would give us. Because God will only fall on truth. God ain't gonna fall on a lie. And, and you have told yourself a lie so long that you can't be delivered because you can't admit the truth. I'm going to go all the way in this morning. I'm, I'm going to just go all the way in this morning. There was a man that sat by a pool for 38 years telling himself a lie over and over and over again. Here's the lie. Well, I'm here because every time I try to get in the pool, somebody get in my way. That's a lie. Come on. That's not the reason. You mean to tell me you've been laying out here 38 years, you couldn't roll to the pool? Come on, come on, somebody. You mean to tell me that you've been out here 38 years and you couldn't crawl to the pool? In 38 years, how in the world did other people get to the pool every year and you've been laying right here and couldn't get there? If they got to the pool, why didn't you get to the pool? See, the pain of living with those questions creates a false story. Well, well, I would have got there, but my daddy wasn't there at the house. I would have got there, but my mom was out doing stuff. I don't know what she was doing. I would have got there, but I don't, you, you don't know where I come from. I would have got there, but I, I didn't finish school. I would have got there, but I got this going on. I got, I got that going on. I would have got there. Everybody got an excuse and they don't none of them amount to a hill of beans. I did this. And you cannot help people. I know this in counseling with people and dealing with people. You cannot help people in counseling who will not admit what they did. Everybody want to come to you with some kind of accusation on the other individual. It take two to tango. It, it's always two sides to a story. And, and, and we always want to come until, let me tell you, until you own up to what happened. Until you not only own up to what happened, but until you take responsibility for it. Until you stop hiding from the guilt seat. Because you're trying to tranquilize your guilt. You know why your daughter disrespected you. It's getting quiet. You know why she cursed you out. You know what she saw about you and the other individual. But you blocked out what happened between you and them trying to make it seem like you're okay. I know I'm telling it right. I know, I, I know I'm being real because a lot of times we look at maybe your children or whatever and you say, well, you acting crazy. They're acting crazy because you've been acting crazy. They're mirroring what it is that they have seen. They're mirroring what it is that they see. And you cannot be mad at them because they're acting like what they're looking at. So, 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 so let, let's go here. So, so let's go, let's go here. You go ahead. Uh, you know, we always talk, you know, at, at camp, we always talking about haters who hate on us. They out to get me. People ain't even think about you like this. They try to destroy me. Ain't nobody trying to destroy you. You're destroying yourself. You're doing a good job by yourself. Ain't nobody got to help you out. 
I'm not a hater. I, 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 and this all that. I'm hurt. It's not that people are hating on you. It's just that people are trying to remind you of the wrong that you have done that you cannot see. You know, sometimes, sometimes, Elder Cross, we find it so easy to tell other people why they're wrong. What they did wrong. And what they need to do to make it right. But then when it comes to us, we got every excuse in the world on why we are justified, on why we don't need to apologize, on why we ain't did nothing wrong. If it was good for them, it's good for you as well. And all of us got to get to a point, because let me tell you, I don't care if you know Genesis to Revelation, you still need to repent. I, I, I don't care if you can get up here and quote all the scripture backwards and forwards and this and that. You attend this seminar, that seminar. At the end of the day, you are still an individual that has a fleshly side of you. And every day of your life, your flesh and your spirit are at war with one another. And you got to be real with yourself and shame the devil. You got to be real with yourself and say that there are some days that I do not answer the spirit. There are some days that I answer my flesh and on those days that I succumb to my flesh, I need to find myself down on my knees in the face of Jesus Christ, asking God to forgive me of what it is that I have done. So, 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 we, so a lot of times, and, and, and we're guilty of stuff, and we act like we don't know why stuff is going on. Why my son acting the way that he do? Mm -hmm. What kind of example have you been? Why is this going on? Why is that going on? Look at the choices that you have made. Let me tell you, it's not always everybody else. Michael Jackson told us better. He said, sometimes it's good to just look at the what? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I started with the man. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen, amen. And the reason, <laughs> the reason we do all this stuff, church, to protect our minds from guilt of what we did at one time or another in one way or another, it is easier to penalize me for my reaction to your behavior than it is for you to own that you brought it out of me. Come on. <laughs> than to own up that you enticed it out of me. And you leave both of us in the ditch because you are in denial. I'm just trying to get us to the place where we recognize that we don't always do good. I'm just trying to get us to the place where we realize don't none of us have angels' wings sitting up in here this morning. I'm just trying to get us to the place to where we recognize, church, that if you are guilty, you need to make that thing right. Everybody here ain't innocent. Truth be told, before God, all of us in here are guilty as charged. Because of the decisions, because of the choices that we have made in our life, God could have done away with us a long time ago. But thank God that he's so patient and that God is so long-suffering toward us. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And even in the very scripture that we have read in Psalm chapter 51, when you read it, what you are reading is David's cry to God after the prophet Nathan had came to his house and said, now David, you did wrong. And because you did wrong, I'm going to kill your child. I'm not going to kill him. God going to take your child. He said that the love child between you and Bathsheba is not going to live. And now you find David. Now, the only reason David would cry to God is if he recognized that he was at fault for what was going on. Is that he was guilty and charged for what has taken place. And I wonder how many of us 
downplay the decisions and the choices that we make in life and say, well, it's okay and, and ain't nothing wrong with that. When at the end of the day, church, we need to find ourselves just like David. We need to find ourselves in the face of God, asking God to forgive us and to help us to live this life. Because yes. let me tell you, you can't do it by yourself. I know you think you Superman. I know you think you Superwoman. But look at your neighbor and say, you can't do it by yourself. You need the help of God. And if God don't help you, you won't have no kind of help. We need God's assistance in this life, church. Jesus would ask people questions like, wilt thou be made whole? What you mean? That's why I'm here. I want to be healed. Why, why you think I showed up? I want to be made better. What kind of question is that? But Jesus would ask them stuff like, will thou be made whole? Because in most cases, it's not my will to be like this. It's not my will. I didn't choose it. I didn't decide I want to be like this. I didn't decide for this to happen. And, and when you say something like that, and when you say stuff like that, you got to come to the realization that if I'm going to get out of this, Ain't nobody but God going to help me to get out of it. Because I've been in this situation for so long. I've been laying here for so long. You look at the man laying there for 38 years. He's been laying there for so long. Imagine all the people that he saw year after year. Hey, good to see you again. Coming to the pool. Hey, good to see you again. All of these other people passing him by. And he's still sitting right there in the same spot. Mercy. No movement. No progress. Nothing happening in his life. Maybe you find yourself like that man this morning. And said, we're preaching well. I'm trying. I'm trying to put forth the effort. I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get stuff done. But it just don't seem like I can make it. Let me tell you, if you can't do it, let me tell you about a man that can help you. I know a man that can assist you with whatever it is that you are dealing with in this life. Let me tell you, I don't care how messed up your background is. I don't care how messed up the choices and the decisions that you have made in this life are. I serve a God that to clean you up from the town of your head to the sole of your feet. I know a man that'll wash you in his blood. He'll make you new. He'll make you clean. He'll give you a brand new start. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. The whole all things shall become new. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, are you man or woman enough to look somebody in the eye and say, I was wrong? Amen. Ooh, boy, you know that's, some of us will swallow nails than to say something like that. But the Bible says that pride coming before a fall. Glory. And, and a lot of us need to get that pride out of the way. A lot of us need to get pride out of our life. Let me tell you, if you, and, and let me tell you because we'll sit back and we know that we are the offender. We know that we are the one that's in the wrong, but we'll sit back and uh, she ain't never apologized to me. She ain't never said that she was sorry. Well, at the end of the day, have you done your part to make sure that you have done what it is that God has called you to do? Because at the end of the day, God is not just gonna judge the other individual, God is gonna judge you as well. So, so, so are you man or woman to look somebody in the face and say, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I want you to forgive me. But what if they don't forgive me? That's on them. You've done what you need to do. And a lot of people, whether you recognize or not, folk won't admit it. It's folk in here right now can't even go to sleep at night and get a peaceful night's sleep because of unforgiveness. Because of the guilt of relationships that you have ruined, because of the choices that you have made. Yes. But you got to get to a place in your life where you can do this right here. Let it go. Look at somebody this morning and say, you just got to let it go. You got to stop crying about it and let it go. You got to stop worrying about it and let it go. You got to stop fretting about that stuff and let it go. You already got high blood pressure. Let it go. 
go. Your health ain't already in the best of condition. Let it go. Don't let nobody mess around and give you a stroke or an aneurysm because you worrying about what they have did at the end of the day. Do your part and God will do the rest. You will never be healed, church, until you fix that stuff. You will never be where you want to be until you fix that stuff in your life. Some folks just go through all throughout life burning bridges, burning this bridge, burning that bridge, bulldozing that bridge. And then when you find yourself down on your luck and you got to go back, look at the decisions that you made. Look at that. Y'all know what we need, church. Y'all know what we need. We need revival. I'm not talking about a, a usual three-day meeting. We need revival. We need revival in our lives. We, and, and, and we don't have true revival because, let me tell you, true revival brings about repentance. It does. True revival brings about repentance, and you cannot have revival when you cannot have repentance. And, and as long as people come and they say, well, this is my story, I'm sticking to it. Since I came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, I've been good, I've been on my best behavior, I have not fallen, I ain't drunk no more, I ain't smoked no more, I ain't been back over Charles' house, I ain't been back over to Annette House, I ain't been and did this, I ain't been and did that. I've just been doing all the good things that a Christian should. I got my ticket in my hand and I'm waiting on Jesus to come. That's what we say. And when you see us, praise the all oh God is good. Oh, Lord, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. He's so wonderful. Thank you. Oh, I called you and you missed the call. I got your voicemail. Thank you for calling. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Don't be calling me with no mess. Thank you, Jesus. When if we be honest with ourselves and with others, we need to do some true work on ourselves. We need to do some true work on ourselves. Th this, is, this brings us to a level of maturing in our faith, church. This brings us to a, f a place to where we have to mature in our faith because immature people don't recognize that they're guilty. But a true child of God, Somebody that's striving to live for Jesus, that's striving to live by his word. You watch the decisions that you make. You watch the words that you say. Sometimes you recognize that in a conversation, I, may, I can't say anything to you right now because if I say it right now, it's not going to come out the right way. Let me call you tomorrow and then we'll get back to that. You know, that's how you will be. That's how you will be as a child of God because you don't want to get in opposition of Jesus Christ. You don't want to make a choice. You don't want to make a decision that's going to tank your relationship with Jesus Christ. And even when those times do come, you got to recognize that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you and to give you another chance. It's time out. Come in the church Sunday after Sunday. Sunday after Sunday. Knowing that you messed up and you won't ask for help. I don't know nobody knowing they're having a heart attack won't go to the hospital. I don't, I don't know nobody that know that they got, I don't know nobody that know both of your back wheels is, is bone bare. And one of them got wires sticking out of it. You ain't finna try to go to no Georgia or no Tennessee or nowhere like that. Some, some of us might try, but you know. <laughs> somebody said, preacher, why sticking out right now? Make it on a wing and a prayer. A wing, a wing and a prayer. <laughs> I said, preach, I'm going to ride till the doors come off. But you, you will not make those choices or those decisions knowing that the conditions were not good for you to get there. So why would you, as a Christian, why would you, as God's child, leave his presence week after week without taking it upon yourself to get some help? Come on, preach. That's madness. We need it. Come on. That's madness. 
when you come to the very place that you can get what it is that you need, but you leave without ever getting it. Well, I ain't gonna stand up and ask for a brother. Hey, folk gonna be looking at me. Folk gonna be wondering about what I got going on. Folk, folk gonna be talking about me. At the end of the day, you gotta get out of this who looking at you, who thinking. You gotta get out of this what other people are saying. Because at the end of the day, if they had good sense like you got good sense, they recognize that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And what you have fallen short of the glory of God, the only thing for you to do as a child of God is to come to him and admit that you have done wrong and to make that thing right. Yes, yes. Stop yes. lying to yourself. You are not all right. Yes. Everything is not on the up and up. You need help. Yes, sir. Yeah. I need help. And God is the only one that can help. I need help. You can't do it by yourself. No. That's our issue. I need we try to do all this by ourselves. Yeah. Well, I got this. I can handle them. You are no match for the devil. Say it. Say it. You walk around here, well, I bind the devil. How you gonna bind what God has not bind yet? <laughs> how, how you gonna do something that God ain't did yet? We have an adversary church. And his entire intention is to keep you on the guilty side. His entire intention, my brother, is to get you so deep in your decisions and in your choices and in your way mm -hmm. that you lose sight of what God would have for your life. Yeah. Come on now. The devil wants to, and that's why he gives you so much stuff. Can I tell you everything that comes your way ain't from God? Come on. The, that's why he sends so much stuff your way mm -hmm. to keep you busy. To keep your mind over here yes, sir. so that you forget what it is that God would have for you to do. That's why he says in his word that I keep him in perfect peace yes. whose mind is stayed on me. So when you find yourself over here with all of that stuff and then you find yourself getting depressed and dejected and losing yourself and all of that stuff and you have to find yourself going right back to the very one that got the peace that you need. But I don't know about y'all but I want to be on the ship before the rains fall. Yes, I, I want to be in some kind of shelter or some kind of safety before everything begins, church. Yes. Whether you recognize it or not, whether you believe it or not, Jesus is on his way back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's on his way. Yes, just He's coming back, Bishop, just like he said that yes, he would. He will. Yes, he will. And when he comes, I actually like this. He's not going to text you the week before. Come on now. Come on now. Be like, Crosby, go ahead and get your stuff fixed. Go ahead and get everything right. Because next Tuesday, Lemo 3, I'm coming. Go and get everything right. He, he's not going to do that. He's not going to tweet you or inbox you on Facebook. He's not going to say, he's not going to do any of that to alert you that he's coming. He's just going to show up. How many of y'all ever had a thief to call you and be like, I'm breaking your house tonight? Okay. <laughs> yeah, like 12 o'clock, as soon as I know you're in the bed, I'm going to break your house. I'm going to steal everything. I'm going to get everything out of there. I'm going to get the cakes that you got on the counter. I'm going to get the greens that you got frozen in the deep freeze. I'm taking everything. How many of y'all ever had, 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 a, had a, a thief to tell you? He, they, don't, they don't. They don't. Come when you, you're not expecting it. I would hate to have come to church all this time, be here every Sunday, tune in on Wednesday night, if you count that, that went over somebody's head. But uh, um, you know, you know uh, and, 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 and I'm doing all of that, and I'm on this ministry, and I'm a part of this club, and I'm a part of this, and I'm a part of that. But to have some things on the inside of me that I've never asked God to correct, that I've never asked God for forgiveness of. And, and, and you just stand there like, look, like, and we're gonna be like, Lord, did I prophesy in your name? And in your name did I not cast out devils? In your name did I do cast the sick and do all these things? Oh, 
my God, I'm, I just know I'm going to get in. I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. And let me tell you, a lot of us got the misunderstanding, we got the misconception because we're watching all these other folks and we listen to all this stuff and we just feel like, oh, when Jesus died, when he shed his blood, his sins covered all of my sins, all sins, past, present, and future, so I don't have no need. No, let me tell you something. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God has forgiven us of those things, but when you commit sin, you need to admit it. You need to ask God to forgive you, and his continual cleansing blood will cleanse you of your unrighteousness. Amen. But that don't mean that you're good just because he died. Nope. You got to admit that you've done wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't let guilt be the reason that you miss heaven. Lord, have mercy. Don't, don't, don't let... Don't let that relationship that you had with somebody and because y'all are no longer as cool as you used to be or tight as you used to be, now there's some tension or some animosity and, 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 and every time you see them in the stove, uh, you, you got to walk past, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, I got to let you know I don't want to see you, so I got to do all this right here, so I, so I, I got to let you know that I don't want to see you, I got to let you know that I don't want to look at you and all that kind of stuff, and we do all of this stuff. When it would be so easy. So easy. Man, I know we ain't talked in a long time. And I know how it ended. It wasn't all that good. But I'm sorry. We good. You see how easy that was? You see how easy that was? But a lot of us won't do something as simple as that. Starting today. Stop feeling guilty. Get that stuff off of you. So that you can be who God has called you to be. A child of God, a Christian, have no need to walk around feeling guilty, but you ought to be grateful. Why am I grateful? Because he could have left me out there where I was. He said, I saw you while you was out there polluted in your own blood. He said, and I said to you, while you were in the blood, live. Yes, Lord. Mm. I bet y'all, somebody should have said amen right there. He said, he said, I saw you while you were out there in your own mess, while you were out there covered in the mud of your own decision. And when I saw you out there polluted in your own blood, I said to you, while you were out there, live. You don't have to stay here. Get up from there. You do not have to stay there where you are even today with unforgiveness in your heart. Amen. With malice in your heart. You, you don't have to stay there, church. Get it off of you. Well, I want to be blessed. I can't be blessed. What's in you? What's in you? Let that stuff go. So that God can really rule and reign in your life. Amen. My God can't dwell in an unclean temple. No, no, no. He can't. So some of us need to go home today, get the broom, get the mop out, get the dusting out, get the sweeping, get the cleaning some stuff up. Devil, I don't know how long you've been occupying, but you got to get up out of here today. Lord, I want you to come in. Lord, I want you to reign in my life. Lord, in my family, I want you to reign. Lord, in my relationship, I want you to reign. Lord, in my finances, I want you to reign. Lord, on my job, I want you to reign. Lord, in my mind, Lord, I want you to reign. I want you to take control. Lord, I want you to sit on the throne and call all those things to be as they should. Yes. And he'll do it if you'll just get out of the way. Yes. How many of y'all really want to be used by God? Yes. You really want to do his will. You really want to follow Jesus. If you can't do that walking around, with all of this stuff on the inside. What can you pour in a full cup? And whether you recognize that, so many of us came here this morning with a full cup. 
I'm talking about just overflowing, bro. All kind of stuff. Bro, Smith, some, some of us holding on to stuff from the 60s and the 70s. I went there, but you, we holding on, <laughs> holding on from stuff from the 60s and, and from the 70s. Uh, you know, oh, back in the day, we was over there and such and such. And, and whole stuff that stuff that you shouldn't even remember. <laughs> you still holding on to it. Won't let it go. You're guilty. Mm -hmm. You're right. <laughs> let it go, church. Yeah. Let it go. We got somebody saying, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Get over it. Get over it. Let it go. And if you let it go, and after you let it go, don't just feel like, because in my mind I said I let it go that, I'm not going to go back that way. I'm not going to get involved in that anymore. That's what we mess ourselves up. Because right. the Bible says, let any man that thinks he stands take heed Come unless on. he falls. Right. And don't, and like I said earlier, don't be walking around here talking, well, if I was, I wouldn't do this. I, I wouldn't do that. I, you don't know, ever know what you will do until you are in the situation. Until you have to make the choice. You don't know what kind of decision that you will make. If you're here this morning, and you find yourself guilty as charged. God is here. Amen. He can forgive you. Right. If you are here this morning guilty as charged. You know what the crimes that you have committed are. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about. I ain't about. I ain't nobody here murdered. Or, or did anything that we know of. But whatever it is. That you have done against God and against his will that you know God is not satisfied with. Ask God to forgive you. Amen. Let the church pray for you. Stop worrying about who. Let, let me tell you, that woman with the issue of blood mm -hmm. didn't worry about who was looking at her. Nope. 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 That's right. That's right. The woman that had the issue of blood, all them folk, the Bible called it the press or the crowd that was out there. All them folks. She just said, well, uh, you know, my hair ain't dead and I don't want to go out there. And folks will be talking about, well, you know, my clothes looking a little ragged and I don't want to just go up in the crowd. Folks looking at me crazy. That woman needed a blessing. That woman needed a miracle. And she said, you know what? I don't care if my hair do look a mess. I'm going up here. And if I can't do nothing but touch the hem of his garment, I know that I shall be made whole. That's the kind of faith that you got to have, church. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're going through. If you can just get to Jesus, everything will be made better. If you can just get to the feet of Jesus and lay it down, he'll make it right for you. If you just give him the opportunity. So today we're moving from guilt to simply being grateful. Yes. That he could have left me where I was, mm -hmm. but he gave me another opportunity. Right. That he could have done away with me a long time ago, but because of his grace and his mercy that he's dispensing towards me, even though I don't deserve it. Let me tell you, I ain't did nothing to earn it, but every day of my life, he's dishing out new mercies I see every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness every day of our lives. God is being good to us and he's blessing us. Thank you, Lord. Let's put ourselves in position to be used by God, to be blessed by God. Get the guilt out of your life. Those issues that you did, get it out of your life so that God can rule and reign. If you are here today, my brother, my sister, and I said maybe you came here this morning with the weight of the world on your shoulder. Maybe somebody came here this morning and life has just been handling you. It's just been throwing you all through all kind of loops and bounds. You've been trying to do everything that you can to solve your situation to make your circumstances better. But it just don't seem like you can do anything for it. It just don't seem like much as you try. Man, you, it seemed like you trying to help it out. It seemed like you don't do nothing but make it worse. I came to tell you, the doctor will see you now. 
I, I came I came to tell you, I came to tell you, you, you came to the right place this morning. I came to tell you, you have come to a man that before you walked through the door, he knew what you were dealing with. Before, before you got in your car this morning and made the journey over here, he knew your heart's desire. He knew your intention. He knew what it was that you were standing in the need of, and he's just waiting to give it to you. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If, any man, if you just come and open the door, I ain't trying to come in and take that. I just want to come in and sup with you. I just want to come in and make my abode with you. I want to come in and make the difference in your life. My brother, my, maybe you are here today and you're looking for Jesus. You come to the right place. If you're looking for Jesus, if you're seeking salvation, you come to the right place on the day. Can't nobody save you but Jesus. I said, can't nobody save you, but you, uh, you may have all the self-help books in the world, but them self-help books can't say, Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the only one that can save you. He'll clean you up and he'll make you new. He's still in the soul-saving business. I, I, know, I know we got a lot of places they don't talk about, you know, hell and, and heaven and all that stuff no more, but guess what? That's why we're here, right? Because all of us are trying to make heaven our home one of these days. And if you want to get there, it ain't but one door that you can come through, and that's Jesus. He said, he said, he said, I, he said, I am the, look, he is the door. God's got a way you can't get over. You can't get under. You can't get around it. You got to come in through the door. He told us, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God ain't made it difficult. We're the ones that make it difficult. God has not made anything. God has made his word so simple that if a child with an honest heart listens, they'll be able to understand God's will for their life. He's waiting even this morning for that alien sinner. For that one that's going through life and does not even know him. For that one that has not yet put him on in baptism. He's waiting even for you this morning. Come here in his word. What, what, what I need to hear, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That he lived, that he died, and on the third day he rose again with all power in his hand. After hearing you believe the same, he said, except that you believe that I am he, you shall all likewise perish. After belief, repentance. What is repentance? Repentance is a change in my mind. That produces a change in my action. And after that I confess with my mouth. The sweetest name known to mortal tongue. And that is that Jesus Christ. Is the son of the living God. And after confession. That soul is willing to put on Christ in baptism. Have your sins washed away. Done away with. Never to rise before you in this life. And neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. He'll give you a brand new start. Yes, He'll clean your slate and make you new. It's up to you. You go back out there in the hall pen. Now, you want to go back out there and get in the mud? That's up to you. But he'll give you a clean start, and he'll make you new. Somebody needs a new beginning this morning. God can give you a new beginning. Amen. God can give you a new start. Maybe there's someone here. You're already a child of God, but you yourself this morning are struggling with guilt. We might, and we be honest, I believe the, the altar will be flooded this morning. But since we won't be honest, maybe there's one or two that would admit and say, you know what? I'm dealing with guilt. I'm dealing with things in my life because of choices, past decisions that I made. And I have not yet been able to get over it. I need prayer. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous, they are built as much. And you've been trying to get everything else to fix it. Let me tell you, some things ain't going to get rid of but by fasting and prayer. Give it to Jesus this morning. He can handle it. He can do it for you. If you just give him the opportunity. Maybe you're here this morning and you need to come to Jesus. You need to respond to the invitation. Don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. While you have this opportunity, make Jesus your choice. As together we stand and sing the song of invitation. There's a fountain is for you.
asking, will you come? Will come. 